I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And I'm Professor Meg. And today we are playing through Agamonia. We are going to be diving through the starting off, we're going to be going through the tutorials over here. We'll have a few videos up for you one at a time, links to everything down below. This is a sponsored playthrough series, mm -hmm. but we'll be diving into Agamonia over here. And Agamonia! Seeing, seeing how things go. Meg, I'm just very you, excited. <laughs> have you played Agamonia, Meg? I've played a small amount of Agamonia. I've played a small amount of Agamonia too, but I believe my small I know amount. what a Grick is, and you might too someday. A when you're older. Oh, that's true. Like Grix, 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 this are indeed. This is a sponsored playthrough of Agamonia. We'll be going through this over here. We'll be going through the first three tutorials over here, as well as a bunch of subsequent missions. We don't know how far this will go, uh, but we will we'll start it off and we'll see. Uh, expect a bunch of expect a bunch of videos. How many missions are there in Agamonia, Alex? Well, just judging, judging by this uh, little intro page over here, because we have three tutorials over here. We have level one, which has three, level two, which has twelve, and then all the way up to thirty-six down here. Now, to be very clear, I don't even know if it's like fully fail forward or if you skip mm -hmm. around or Branching choose an adventure. Kind of don't know any of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but to some extent But there's that's how much content is available. 36 possible adventures. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and dive into this. We're going to go on an adventure. We're going to start off with either, and then I'm going to make this Meg's choice over here. Or. We can either start with the Flooded Inn by reading through what the Flooded Inn adventure is, which is the first tutorial, or you can start by reading our character summaries on the back of our boards. Oh, actually... Let's start with our character summaries. I did not do that last I, time. I knew that you didn't do that. Oh, you trickster. I will start this off. I am playing as Matajam. Matajam's over here, this guy over here, and we got a little character summary on the back over there. And Matajam is going to have, he's a Patagon Ranger Shaman. Patagon's going to be one of the uh, the, the species, the race, races, and we have Ranger Shaman. In his youth, Matajam was a prime example of the Patagon Scout. All four arms worked seamlessly with bow, knife, and the forest. He hunted, gathered herbs, and sacrificed to the totems. As an adult, he started a family and got a job, becoming a middle manager <laughs> in the Amethyst Order's forestry operations. That sounds so funny. <laughs> then he grew up and started a family and becoming went to the a, suburbs. He became a middle manager, that's what it is. He became a middle <laughs> manager in the Amethyst Order's forestry operations, overseeing... He took the train into the city every day. <laughs> overseeing the felling of the trees he once climbed. The spreading oh fungal... Oh my gosh! got dark, dark quickly. This, we just went on a journey together. Uh, the spreading fungal plague would destroy the clacker jungle anyways, he told himself. Ooh, justifying it. Self-justification. This is... Self-justification, I like it. This is more than I thought it was going to be. Oh, wait for the next sentence. This is Not, giving. I guarantee you cannot possibly expect the next sentence. He put down his loincloth and knife and donned the robes of a civilized southerner. He was moderately successful, but constantly unhappy. Are we playing Agamoni or real life? What's happening here? That was what... <laughs> Do you miss your loincloth days, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> that was when Matajam was visited by the spirit animal, Nalam, who called him to a shamanic quest of epic proportions. Matajam bid his family farewell, put on his traveling clothes once again, honed his old knife, and restrung his bow. Instead of he just... put that loincloth back on, it still fits. Instead of destroying the clock... You see, that, that's how it's a fantasy. That's how you know it's a fantasy. <laughs> Instead of destroying the clacker jungle, his quest is now to save it from demons and the fungal plague. This is 20 years later. I want to read every years? single character board. I feel like I feel like we should re-choose our characters based on reading through their stuff, but I would probably choose Matajam. No, I like that this is the story that we're forced into. I'm kind of terrified to read mine. Let's go through it. Okay, so I'm playing as, I want to say it's Jonai Javian? Something like that. Uh, but we're going to call her Joja for the rest of the game. See because what? that's easier. That's Jojo. Yeah, I know. Isn't it? Jo Joja is jo like Jojo Rabbit. I think it's Jojo Siwa. Don't judge me. Maybe it's. Don't, don't judge know. me. For well, that. you have children. They don't watch JoJo Siwa. I see news articles. I think Philip DeFranco is why I know JoJo Siwa. Oh, okay, okay, he okay. talked about her once in a while. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> she. Her, it says unknown blade master, Aox Hunter. Mm. Yeah, that does sound like Aox Hunter. Okay. Joan and I grew up among poor Nahitigri fisher folk in Ambergate. But she is not a Nihitigri herself. Yeah. In fact, no one knows what she is or where she came from. Only that she seems to have some special connection to the magical forces of Aeon and Aeox. Growing up, a blind man taught her to fight with almost any weapon on Agamonia. He would have wanted her to, he would have wanted her to dedicate her life to fighting demons, but for Jonai it was more important to save her girlfriend and neighborhood from crime from the crime lord benefiting off their misery. Okay, okay. Well little, little daredevil girl. Um she disgu she disguised bleh, she disguised herself as a shadowy avenger who fought crime with her powers. 
Daredevil is an Avenger, yeah. just in case you didn't know. I didn't know that was going to be the next sentence. Little did she know she would lead... Little did she know this would lead her to discovering mystical and powers that manifest as a glowing cape and helmet. But will she fulfill her mentor's wish or continue as a crime fighter? I feel like that's not nearly as dramatic. Uh, yeah, mine was a journey. That was like... That was a backstory. Yeah, she's like, fine. She's like, out doing stuff. I mean, she has like, good guy vibes. Good guy vibes. Good, good vibes. guy vibes. Anyways, today we are playing through the Flooded Inn. This is the first tutorial. We will be teaching you how the game plays as we go, because honestly, the tutorials will do that for you. So this is going to be very uh, very basic as far as it goes. It is, in my opinion at least, it is fun, so it might be worth watching. Obviously, anything and everything we do throughout this campaign will have some degree of spoilers because Huge of the nature of this alert. game. Like, you can't not have spoilers. Uh, it's just it's just the way the game plays, so um, it's, it's very story-driven. There very... are obviously things we may not get to, and there are things we might yeah. not unlock, so even for us, there is a replay factor but overall you are going to hear most of everything that's happening so huge spoiler for context this is my fifth time playing the flooded inn uh, overall and I think I probably started to feel I was seeing everything on the fourth time like the first three times I still enjoyed it still had fun with it so but the fourth time I already started felt that's like just in terms of context anyways past that I was gonna say something else we have that teaching you the game as we go through it um I don't know the other thing I was gonna say but we're gonna go ahead and start off by reading through the flooded inn the city of Ambigate stands on dozens of small islands, connected by canals and bridges. One such island holds the shimmering squid inn where you are staying. One evening you are standing on the balcony overlooking the magnificent gate from which the city gets its name, a doorway into nowhere. A few weeks ago, the runes decorating the gate lit up with an eerie blue radiance. People have come from far and wide to witness this phenomenon, just as you admire it from your balcony. Just then, the gate starts to crackle with azure energy, and water starts to pour in through it. The canals overflow, and the islands closest to the gate are completely submerged. Cries of panic and the ringing of bells fills the air. You rush downstairs into the common room where water is already knee-deep. The innkeeper, the barmaid, and the customers all look desperately in need of help as the water pours in through the door and the windows. To help them, you will need to act quickly. You do not know any of the others standing with you at the bottom of the stairs, but they also seem eager to assist. If you divide up the tasks at hand, you should be able to help many of those in need. And that's the flooded in over there. That is the flooded in. We're going to be going ahead and uh, setting up over here as far as getting our characters at the start location over here. Uh, like I said already, we'll be walking you through this as far as just the general rules, how things operate. But the biggest thing you need to know right now is that... Oh, I, that's the thing I said. I was going to say the other thing. I remember the other thing. This is not going to have any combat in, in the first tutorial scenario. No so combat. So combat will be, will, will be dealing with in the next scenario. So if you're only here for the but combat... But it will still be exciting. ...and the beating up bad guys, uh, then I suggest skipping to the next scenario. But uh, honestly, if you just want to know how to play and you don't want to get spoiled too much... I think if you watch like for like ten minutes, you'll you'll get that much. Well, you know, I I didn't want to do this discussion now, but, but I guess we can just jump into it. Yes. We could either do a live stream or a video that's spoiler free, discussing things after we play a few. Like a review, I think. Yeah. We can do a review. Or discuss. 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 We'll talk about it. it Anyways, depends. either I'm in your review or we can do a live stream. We'll figure it out. But with that, let's go ahead and start this off. This is Agamonia. We're going to be starting off with our characters over here. The general selection is every act, every turn you're going to have an action and a maneuver. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, our actions are printed on our player board. These are the starting actions you have. She has these two. I have those two. They're basically the same thing, as in they are exactly the same thing. <laughs> We're also going to have our maneuvers over here, and these are going to be different, slightly different. So, for instance, I recover more stamina versus you recover better health. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a different metric over there. And then... Um, then we're going to have these are our defining attributes of our characters which are going to be relevant for tests. We'll talk about those you know, as we go through it. It completely makes sense. I have four hands with items. You have four hands. <laughs> I did not realize that. Oh, I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, we're going to start off. Uh, we're going to take an action and a maneuver. Uh, but this, this scenario is more about the exploration, which means for me, I'm going to go ahead and start off by taking a action that gives me an extra maneuver. These are maneuvers. This gives me an extra maneuver. All right, Meg, to you to select an action. Um... While you do that, I'll talk about some things. This is our stamina pile. You can use it to expend on different things. It also is your health. So you, as you take damage, you will lose health as you go through it. So you're spending stamina, you get tired and weaker, and you have less health left effectively until you recover. You can recover stamina or health, and you can spend stamina to take extra movement. I'm going to choose to focus. Oh, already? Mm -hmm. Ooh. 
All right, so with that in mind, we're going to go ahead. If you're choosing focus, you're choosing the red action. I'm choosing the green action. Normally, there'll be an initiative deck that will define which actions go first. You'll flip that and we'll resolve. In this case, the initiative is predetermined the entire first scenario. So it's always going to be red, then blue, then green actions are going to be the way we play through it. So because you chose a red action, I chose a green action, you'll be going first. All right. Um, and then H will interact with when we are in that spot, right? Yes. So okay. the way it works is going to be interaction points on the board over here. These interaction points have a range at which you draw the card to see what that interaction is. Until we're in H0 over here, because it's 0, we won't see it. Versus if you walked here, you would immediately see what's going on in D because of the range of 1. That just represents the world happening around you. So different things will ha be noticeable to you at different ranges. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think another small thing that I don't think you've said yet, but it's just for you guys to know, these little dots are how many people can be in that spot. So some places are tighter, like this little alleyway where only one person can be walking through. Mm -hmm. um, so there are also things like that on the map. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to move on to H. That's going to be using a maneuver. Now, a maneuver is going to be a range of two right now. Mm -hmm. And so she is able to continue moving as she goes through it. But as soon as we see H, we're going to go ahead and resolve it. Do you want to draw the card H? And you're welcome to read them. Yeah, I can read them all, whatever you want. The Shimmering Squid. So I'm going to show you the Shimmering Squid over here. There we go. Focus-ish. No, not focusing. It's been having a hard okay. time not doing the table. In the common room, the innkeeper is desperately trying to direct customers upstairs. One, a silk merchant, is ignoring him and is instead making her way back to her room. Meanwhile, the young barmaid of the Shimmering Squid is standing behind the bar, clearly concerned about something. The stout Carillion innkeeper heartily welcomed you yesterday, yester eve, but is now fighting off panic. Okay, now the way these cards work over here is you now, you see the event at the range on the table, which is range zero, but you can interact with the event at a different range, which in this case is also zero, but sometimes you might see something at one, but only be able to interact at zero, which represents, you know, seeing it getting closer and engaging. Over here, we, this card is now a card that's simply on the table. At any point, Meg can choose to offer help by flipping this card, but that's a choice she gets to make. She does not have to do so. Now, would that take my app? Focus nope, action? that's just that's just engaging in the game. Nope. Okay, then I will offer to help, I guess. Now, just to keep in mind with the context clues that we got, we're helping the innkeeper, but there's also a silk lady. There is a young and the barmaid, barmaid of the Shimmering Squid is standing behind the bar. Mm -hmm. The bar is likely going to be this area over here. Mm -hmm. That's the bar. Uh, there's also uh, the, 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 the silk merchant is ignoring and instead making her way back to her room. So there's a silk mm -hmm. merchant too. Okay. Okay. Are you certain you can face the current? As Bacorda is my witness, I want no harm to come to you. He looks you up and down, appraising you from head to toe. In fact, perhaps you could help with the bridge. I fear it will collapse, and then the escape route will be cut off from any townsfolk. Work hard, and may the creator's success flow down on us all. <laughs> there are others also in need of your help, such as the silk merchant and the barmaid. And who knows who else is still inside the rooms? Just then, a gush of the waves sends more water and debris in through the open door. Oh gosh. You must hurry! Okay. Oh, this card's going to be gone. We're done with it. All right. So that was one of my movements. Yes, you still have one movement left. I'm not sure if I... Was I supposed to tell you ahead of time that I'm doing So you're supposed movement? to define before ahead of time? You can do so now. That was definitely the plan because yeah, yeah, I yeah, took focus. Course. And I couldn't reach anything. Yep. Just that. Um, so I am going to move to here and then up to here. Okay. So you can interact with B. So you should move one, two, three. And C. And you can interact with B and C. Which one do you want to resolve first? C. Go ahead. Draw C. Stella's Grick needs saving. I'm going to try to show it to you again. We're going to see if it focuses or not. So if we go over here and pull back, maybe. Nope. It really wants it to focus really on the board. It really wants the table. Yeah, it really wants the table. Sometimes yeah. it happens. There's ways to, like, cup your hands sometimes. Honestly, but... I would show it to them right there. Whoop, wrong, <laughs> wrong camera angle. Stella's Grick needs saving. The innkeeper's stepdaughter, Dallas. The innkeeper's stepdaughter, Stella, has a pet Grick called Fungus. Fungus is caught in the cellar and in danger of drowning. They call him Gus for short, I bet. To help her, you have to either grab the Grick or convince it to jump into your lap. Oh. Yeah. Oh. We can rescue Fungus the Grick, although this is going to be at range zero. So at range zero, you can rescue Fungus the Grick. Mm -hmm. Until then, you cannot. Okay. Now we have card B to resolve. All right. Dangling Chandelier. You cannot jump over the high bar, but above it hangs a chandelier. Above the high bar. The high bar sounds like gymnastics. You cannot jump over the high bar, but above it hangs a chandelier. The light of the candles glimmers in the flowing water. An athlete might be able to jump up from the water, grab the chandelier, and swing the way forward. Bar acrobatics. We can flip this as soon as you want to. Yeah, let's do it. 
Bar acrobatics. No, we have that side. Let's try. You may spend one movement point. Okay, so this is basically an, an action you can take. You can spend one movement point. Unfortunately, you don't have any. Oh. You chose the wrong but. thingy. Uh, to be able to basically make a test. Okay, so this is going to be something we'll talk about more as it happens. We'll show you how it works. But these are tests. Tests are things you can interact with in the game, uh, but they generally require you to do certain things. Like rescuing Fungus the Grick is not just simply a flip. It's a taking a test. Now, tests can be taken once per turn per test. It doesn't have a cost unless the cost is specified, although it doesn't have a failure unless the failure is specified. So more often than not, it's worth trying for tests, and if you win, you win. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I believe that's your turn. That's my turn. All right. To my turn, I'm going to go ahead, and I am going to take an extra maneuver action. So I think I'm going to be starting with a movement of three. I think I want to try to... Do I want to walk up here, or do I want to head out? Hmm. That's up to you. I mean, you could just dip into that person over here yeah okay fine so i'm gonna go ahead there's also a boat right there yeah i'm gonna spend one over here to interact with this bot here so i'm gonna spend one stamina to be able to move one two three so i'm gonna go one two and then um see that person can i get card d a mysterious stranger approaches not approaches i added the approaches it's not true <laughs> a mysterious stranger an agitated one-eyed Ignacia is rushing to her room where a strange-looking device She's not approaching at all. Awaits. She's running away. <laughs> you have seen her here in the inn and have overheard her introducing herself as a silk merchant. This is the silk merchant we've heard about. Ignacias are not a common sight in Ambergate, and silk merchants have no use for such devices. Approach her. Well, approach her is at range zero, so I can't yet, but fortunately I have one movement, so I'm going to move into there, and then I will approach her. How do you know me? Venerate the sun, she says in relief, and addresses you by your name. It is you. Please help me. I left some valuable manuscripts and birdie in yonder stable. Would you save them for me before they get wet? You have seen her in the inn and have never spoken to her before. How does she recognize you? Please, there's no time for that. I have the means for escape, but you must assist me. How does she recognize you? This is my fifth time playing this scenario. Do you just have one of those faces? I do have one of those faces. Maybe she follows your YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. Subscribe. Like, As share. a reminder, subscribe down below. I'm going to go ahead and spend another stamina. I'm taking an extra maneuver, so I'm going to do it again. So spending one more stamina. You can't do that. Why not? I don't know. It's how, a, did, how have you spent two? The first movement and the second movement. They're both maneuvers. And I'm going to go one, two, three. And head out. I got you. You did the same one twice. Yeah. Yeah. That's my turn. That is it. That's my turn. Uh, that's the round. And now, at the end of the round... What did talking to her do? Nothing really yet. All Just right. like most people in life, honestly. Uh, if you unsubscribe, uh, we're gonna go ahead and flip one of these cards over here. Now these cards, you go ahead and flip it. Those are a timer on the game. That null number Two. and the arrow don't matter at all for us right now. Those are things that matter later. But what does matter is we have seven turns in this adventure. There's not a inherent. Well, we don't know actually this, that, the other. But we have seven turns, and then the adventure is over. So um, we gotta get crack and locking. And that I believe is going to be choose time to choose other stuff. So I think, I think that I'm going to choose to focus this scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and focus. Do you think I need to focus, or should I just like not even? Uh, you I I, know, I think I think you got it. Maybe. Oh no, I want to save the Greg. Okay, so do what you need to do. You doing the same thing? You are focusing? I mean, you are. You to be fair, we know that you have two tests coming up. So I get plus one for each test. Yes. Oh. Every single time. Yeah. Easy. Use it Focus. Focusing I'm is. I'm gonna focus so hard on this little baby Greg, it's gonna jump right into my lap. So right about now, we both chose a red action. This is the next round. We are going to do the red initiative, so we can choose whoever goes first. Mine I is have more no preference. Well, obviously, it's a pet animal. We gotta save. All right, B. Movement point. <laughs> movement point. So you can go ahead and spend a movement point to take a test. So this is an athletics test, which is going to be her attribute over here. So she has to get three successes on the test. She's going to be rolling two red dice, but you're rolling an extra red die because of that. Yay. And right about now, the way you read these is this is a success, and the, each of these is you can spend up to two stamina for up to two successes. And it's a three? It's a three. So I will turn this one into... I have to spend two, two to make two successes? Yeah, that each yeah. one of those lives is spent up to two to get up to two. All right. Okay, so you've now taken an athletics test of that, and you spent one of your movement points. Also, before we define it, are you spending an extra stamina for an extra movement no, point? No, no, okay. because I'm going to end up... Because be, will interacting... Will me interacting with C stop my movement no. points? No. Oh. I believe so. I should double check that, but I'll pin a comment if I'm wrong. Yeah, 
Yeah, sure, I'll do it. Let's Spending go stamina. crazy. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. You spent the first movement point. You're jumping over. When you get a success, you get to move to any area adjacent. Now, also, if you failed, by the way, you can still spend a movement point to be able to move. So it's actually worth noting. You spend two stamina to move. If you fail the test, you can still move, but you spend an additional movement point. And I would have had three. Yeah. And for then, the rest yeah, of the turn, I would do that. So you're going to take back. So, so you're going to fail the test effectively. Take two back? Yes. Okay. So you're going to fail the test, which will give you the stamina back. So you're going to only spend the one stamina. Because I'm basically going to use my last movement point to, to jump swing back, back out. Which you can do. It says for the rest of this turn, you can spend a movement point without rolling oh, to great. move. Yeah. It's great. a low failure plan penalty. So not one that's worth paying for as much. All right. Cool. So okay. you spent Let's that. And now we're going to go ahead. And now you're in C2, which means you can go ahead and take a five success test at saving the grip yeah, on either of these attributes. Okay. And that's one, two, three, four, five. Ah, 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 but I have to spend yeah. two. Yeah. Okay. He is worth it. He, this little baby. There is also, by the way, a he side over here. He jumps into my lap, that's I think. That's a success and a re-roll, in case you wanted. Yeah, that one, I, it's fun if you keep rolling it. So you've now seen all the sides. Anyways, success. You've seen every side. Go ahead and flip. I think you should read this one. Okay. <laughs> You take Fungus the Greg in your arms and pet it gently. It is wet and miserable, but safe. Meanwhile, Stella has run to the stairs. She waves at you and yells, Oh, thank you. May the stars shine upon, upon you, con <laughs> May the stars shine upon you, kind savior. Please bring him to me. Place this card below your hero board. You may give this hero this <coughs> card to a hero in the same area as your hero on the turn their turn is yours, blah 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 blah, etc. etc. If the hero with this card moves to an area with the exit sign, place this card in the salvage pile, which is over yeah. here. The salvage pile represents things you're taking to the next scenario based on how you performed in this scenario. Not necessarily taking next to it, resolving. There'll be resolutions. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. He's important. Very important. Okay, so Meg's currently headed back here, so you want to save him. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. It's my turn. Oh, no, no, no. I think I have that one last movement point. You so do I'm going to just. Point. And I can just do it for free, right? That yep. it said I can do it. Can I see anything if I go that way? Do so, we care about the back corner or we're just going to say no? That's up to right? you. There's the A1 over here. That's option I, one. I literally do not know what's over there. Okay. I've never cared. Or the alternative, you're heading your way. I think the only things that make sense are heading here or heading to the exit, in which case this spot is a nice large spot. Oh my gosh, I never realized that. I guess that. it's equidistant with that one, I guess, now that I think about it. Yeah, because either way it yeah, gets to either there. way there. All right. Well, I think the Greg would be less scared taking the... We're okay. going to we're gonna parkour over this and swing and jump onto these boxes just to mm. make the Greg less scared. Technically, I don't know. The question... I think, no, I think it's one zone. I think it's one. I mean, the question would be, is the chandelier only over here? In which case, you can go here. No, but again, I think it's this whole box. I agree with you. Because I think if you're here, you interact with it. Yeah, I agree with you, and I think it doesn't matter either way. Okay. And with that, it's my turn. So, my turn, I get three moving points because I'm going to spend the stamina again, once again, to do that. Because I recover three stamina, the math on it makes sense that I should frequently do that. I'm going to go one, two. Oh, wait, as soon as I head out, I immediately see that. I do not see that. So, can I get L? Sure. Because a range of two, we're going to see that boat over there. We have the blocked street over here. The blocked street. The street outside the inn has been blocked by a broken gondola, carried by the flood. An escaping Patagon family, that's me, that's my, mm -hmm. my people, with many four-armed children is stuck on the other side. The strong current keeps the gondola in place. The Patagon mother looks at you with desperation in her reptilian eyes. I do want to point out that when we we're having a conversation about who should go first, you were like, the poor pet needs saving. These children we are... We didn't know. And they look, they look like pets, too. <laughs> Get back. When we get closer, we can lift the gondola. I think we can probably safely move the bar them. pack rabbits. Can yes. you not get there yet? Uh, no, it's at range zero. I see them from here, but I have to make the way. Fortunately, I have two movement. Oh. One, two. Oh, oh, oh. And now I'm going to go ahead and lift the gondola. I do <laughs> a strength test over here. I already have two strength plus one. So I'm going to be rolling three dice over here. And I need to get four successes. So I got one, two, and I could spend three, four to get successes. So we are safe on that count. Uh, that's going to be that over there. And success is we flip this card. So, family saved. Straining your muscles in the extreme, you manage to move the gondola aside. The relieved families can escape the flood. May the stars shine upon you, many of them say in ethically fashion. The Pathogen fat children deftly climb over the remaining debris while their mother turns into you, forming a complex symbol with her four claws. I thank the spirits, and I thank you. 
Reveal story card dot. If you want to go ahead and grab, towards the end of this deck over here, there'll be little symbols for things that can be scenario cards. So we're going to grab the dot card, which is a little boat is going to be uh, gone. It's a little boat. We are also going to put the family saved into our salvage pile automatically. Again, represents things that will be. This. Oh yeah, I forgot I have to bring. Speaking of which, we have to do a lot of things. We have to. We have to. You haven't come up with a party name or anything. A little boat. While moving the gondola, you notice a small boat stuck behind it. It bobs precariously on the waves, but does not turn over. A small push might allow you to move it to a place where it could hold your salvage. Ooh, we have salvage. Mm. A hero in L may flip this. So if I'm in L, I can go ahead and flip that, but I have to spend a maneuver, which I don't have a second maneuver, so we're gonna have to wait till next turn. Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah. Which means it's uh, time to flip the end of scenario card, and that's rounds two of seven done. All right. Okay. And now we get to choose. The tricky part here is the tricky part here. Hmm. I'm trying to think of the timing. Because this will give us a new way to hold salvage, which means instead of having to go to the stairs, you can head out. But in order for that to be relevant, I think I have to... One, two, three. I'm going to go ahead and take focus again. Okay. So that I can go first. Okay. Okay. Then I'm going to... Oh, but then I spend a maneuver and I can't. I have to do extra maneuver. I'm going to do an extra maneuver. And um, we'll figure it out. Okay. So. I mean, I can still just hold on to him. For yeah, I think right? so. I think so. Okay. Because where will that be? We'll have to bring things to there. We don't know yet. I, it, could, it could be over here, so we'll see. But I think it just makes sense, unfortunately. I mean, yeah. Go see what Jay is. We'll figure it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going first. Your blue's going first over here, so you get an extra maneuver. Yes. Or so you can recover. That's what I was. I was gonna do one to move three, and then recover two. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'll spend the one. To go one, two, three up to J. Let's see what J is. Yeah, spending stamina and the recovering process gives you a bit of a push and pull as far as things like the decision you're just seeing. Bridge over troubled water. Like a bridge over troubled water. The flowing waters and the floating debris have damaged the bridge and is in danger of collapsing Take into the, the canal. To clear the bridge would require strength, and to remove the debris from the supporting beams takes dexterity. To direct the fleeing citizens to assist demands the to direct the fleeing citizens to assist demands leadership. Fortunately, you are in a position to help. You can, for zero, clear the bridge. Not for zero, at range zero. You can clear the bridge and flip it. Okay. Okay. Helping out. Helping is its own reward, but maybe you'll get another reward by helping as much as you can here. So you can test any of the three attributes at strength four. You need four successes. Each success has you placing a token on this card. So uh, this is going to be a test that's basically just in play, which I think we'll leave um, over here. So I could do that now? You could absolutely, yes, absolutely. Success is a test star once a turn. All right, well, I'll recover two first, and then test. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, oh, you but I only get two. two. Yeah. I'll just do it just to do it, because yeah, nothing bad happens, anything. right? Unless it tells you otherwise. That is nope. two, so it's right. not enough to succeed. All right, and then that was my whole turn, because mm -hmm. I recovered. All right, on my turn, I will go ahead and spend my first extra maneuver to flip this little boat. And we have this. So this is going to be an overlay card. So this is actually going to go over, where is it? Over here, I believe. I believe, yes, we're placing J. So yes. So you're over here on J, and we now have, oh, it's in your spot. It's actually in your spot. This is where you can put salvage. Oh. So right now. Okay. The only question I have is, can you do it from both spots? But I don't think it matters. So yeah. in your spot, you can do salvage right there. So uh, that's going to be my first action. And my second thing is I'm going to spend one to do a maneuver and go one, two, three to J over here, where I will test J, and I'm going to test it on agility for strength three over here and see what we get. And I got, whoa. Wow. Okay, so kind of. I cannot do a jack because that's I don't have wow. four stamina. So that's going to be a no for me. Yeah. And with that, we're done with the round. All right. So this says... If the hero with this card moves into the area. You're fine. You're fine. Okay. I, I can't imagine. I'm, I'm going to go with the... Um, the area moved into me. Yeah. I, <laughs> that's as it is. I am going to go with the... Um, it's one of those few times where I'm not even going to bother check the rule book. I'm not going to read the letter of the law, which the letter of the law would be no. And I'm going to say, you can do it. Okay. I'm not even going to pin a comment for that. Even if the game says I can't, I'm okay with it. We're not doing it. Yeah. All right. So... I'm going to take an extra maneuver again. Okay. Uh, so I, if you want to focus. I might focus me. so that I can oh, take that a test again. Me, yeah, either way. Yeah. Okay. You should recover, dude. Oh, I probably should recover. Oh, that's a good idea. I should recover and take the test so I can do it again sure. next turn. Okay, I'm okay go with that. So I'm going to go ahead and recover three stamina over here. 
And then I'm going to take the test over here, where I get to roll four dice on my agility attribute. And that's going to be, whoa. Oh my gosh. So I could spend three. I'm going to do it. That side likes you. But I'm going to spend three over here and put a success token on this card. You're so helpful. Okay. That was my entire turn, which doesn't feel like the best, but, uh, you know, it has some helping is its own reward. <laughs> All right. My turn? Yes, indeed. So we're going to say the Grick jumps to the yes, boat? Yes, to the salvage pile. Goodbye, baby. Um, and I'm doing an extra maneuver. And you get to test so... for free no matter what. What? You can test for free. Oh yeah, that's true. So yeah. let's just do that. It's just two dice, yeah. right? That is, you can do it. Tempting. I was gonna spend things to move though. The question is how much of it, you only spend two, not four. I know, I'm thinking just how much I could for movement. Yeah. Yeah, let's go, I mean, there's no combat. <laughs> okay, so I'll put one on. That's two successes on the card. Um, And then I'm gonna spend one to do three movement. Mm -hmm. okay. This is me? Yes. I'm going to go one, two, and interact with M. Okay. So we're going to see what M does. And then from there, uh, I believe that is the round. Well, no, I have, oh, then I have CM. another movement and then another maneuver. Door to the stable. The door to the stable is locked and you will and will not open. At least it has slightly slowed the ingress of flood water. That's going to be uh, this. You can, or at range zero, you can flip that card. Okay. So we're going to put it off to the side because you're not at range zero. And then you have one more maneuver, I believe. That's right, that's only two. You only move two, you can move right. again. So, read that again? The door to the stable is locked and will not open. At least it is slightly slowing the ingress of flood water. So this is what I'm worried about, is that this place flooded, mm -hmm. and there's probably animals in here. And there is a different way inside. Seemingly, if you look at this. It seems to be. So I'm going to use my third movement to go this way. Okay. And then I'm actually not going to pay... For the, I'm going to do just a two movement now okay. and go one. Well, actually, from one, I can see that. Okay, let's flip E. Maintain attach. There is a low entrance to the stable meant for delivering hay. Like everything else, it is overflowing with water and debris. At range zero, you can take a closer look. Okay, I'll move up and take a closer look. Okay. Regal through the gap. The sloshing water and debris make it surprisingly difficult to get through the overflowing entrance, but someone who is steady on their feet should be able to do it. That might be me. You may spend a movement point to test agility too, but okay. you do not have movement points, so you cannot right. this round. Okay. All right. That's the round. And we flip a guard. Our third round is done with, and it's on to, well, the next round. And next I think, round. I think I'm going to test again, honestly. I think I'm going to test again. I'm going to focus again. I want to recover, but I also want to focus. That's where I'm at right now. Okay. Um, I wish I recovered three like you. I'm jealous. It's, life's crazy like that. Life's crazy. I guess I'll stay where I am. Okay. So we're going to go ahead, and I believe I'm going first. I will test with four dice on that test again. And we have, geez, this is brutal on my recovery. I should have recovered first, honestly, but I can still afford it. I'm going to get a third success on that. And then I think I'm going to recover as my second maneuver. And that's going to be that. You're very helpful. So uh, I think next round I'm going to start charging forward. All right. So now I'm going to try to wriggle through. Wriggle through. Wriggle through the gap. This may spend a movement point. Are you spending an extra stamina for an extra movement point? Uh, no. Okay. So you're doing a two move, movement of two. And then you're going to, yeah. Okay, cool. Two successes. That's two successes. So you get to uh, go ahead, move from E to F or vice versa. Should I get an F card? Uh, I guess so. That makes sense. Is there an F card? Yeah. The flooded stable. You center the watery stable. You enter the watery stable full of wet hay and animal screams. Oh. At the back, you can see a strange contraption, a wagon with mechanical wings. You have seen an Ignacia in the inn who says she is a silk merchant. Maybe this device belongs to her. Mm. Uh, Panic sounds at infinite range. We can flip this. Flip it. A stable with history. Looking around you, you realize this place has not always been a stable. It was once a temple of a pagan goddess before Benin had become a secular republic. For generations, it has been used for keeping animals. But now there's only one toggle in the far pen. The flood <gasps> is making it panic. Of course it is. See, that poor toggle. Oh, yeah. I would panic as well. Everything around me was flooding. Why Quick, is the flood happening? Let's go rescue it know? instead of the other kids in the other room. Do, exactly. Do we know why it's flooding? Uh, it's just all of a sudden happening? Uh, there was a thing on the other page. We read some stuff. But I think it's just... Yeah, it's just happening. Okay. All right. So that was one of my movements. You have another mirror. 
Well, and I have two movement, right? You, I have one more yes, movement. Yes, you do have one movement. Um, so I'll go to here. Okay. So from one, I can see K. Okay. The Scared Beast. The distressed Togrel is rearing his pen. It is tangled in some ropes and clearly scared of the rising waters. When it sees you, it kicks the stable support beams, causing the whole building to shake. At range zero, you can calm the Togrel, but you're not yet at range zero. Mm -hmm. And it's a four success mental check. Okay, so I think that I will use my second maneuver this turn to recover. Okay. And prep for that next turn to save this little baby. Sounds reasonable. I'm going to save him. Okay. I save all animals. Three, you save all the people. Two, three. Okay. Okay, cool. And with that, we flip a card. And this time around, I'm going to choose extra maneuver. Nice. You're going to come help? I'm going to come help. Or all try right. to help. Try to help, let's be honest. Because I got an animal to save, let's be real. Yep. All right. Uh... And I'm gonna focus for mm -hmm. this. Okay. What are you? Are I'm you doing, doing extra maneuver? So you go first. All right. So I am forced going to move into here with the baby. Now, should I point? I could point out um, if you spend an extra extra stamina, you'll be able to go here and there in the same turn. I don't know if you want that. Up to you. I'm not too worried about it. We got plenty of time. Famous last words. I want the things in right, case I, I need to it. save the tall girl. Let's flip K. I'd rather save him. I, listen, I'm here for it. Do what you need to do. The scared beast. The, we're going to flip this over here. Oh, oh, sorry, success. success. You need success. I need another dice, please. You need another die. Because I get three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so those ones, guys, are the ones that I get to re-roll. There you go. You got three successes already. And five successes five. <laughs> with the ability to spend for more. I think we can successfully say that you calmed the Toggle. Oh, he loves me. The Toggle Whisperer. You place your hand on the Toggle's jaw and make soothing noises. It responds to your calming tone and relaxes enough for you to untangle it from the ropes. <sighs> it shakes itself a bit and looks at you gratefully. I love him. Place this card in the Toggle in the salvage pile. I love You have one more movement. Do you think I care about this? Should I uh, not what, what are the I options? care, but should what are I the options? I don't know. I can come help with this stuff. I guess we don't. We, there's nothing. I'm else heading towards done. the the silk merchant. Told us about the birdie, and the only other thing we haven't explored is a one, not a one. A. I'll go here. Okay. Uh, my turn. I'm gonna go ahead and take a test over here because it does not hurt to do so. So I'm still gonna test my uh, agility, and we got. Whoa. Okay, that's four successes right there. But I'm gonna see how much more we get. So one, two, three, four. I'm gonna test again. And ah. <laughs> five, six, seven. Eight nine. That was a nine success test. If only test. you could. I am ninety percent sure. Extra. I'm ninety percent sure it's binary. It's either I'm fail sure or success. I'm sure it is. I don't think you can uh, over succeed, but that was that was the best test I've ever done in this game. Yeah, for, the for real. Uh, anyways, uh, that's four successes on this, and then I'm gonna spend my maneuvers to go ahead and go one, two, three, spending a stamina, and then hmm, you're over there. I might just recover. I think I'm just Catch gonna recover. Breath. I'm gonna recover. Okay. Why are you coming this way anyway? To because the alternative, I guess I could go back there. Should I go back there? Or just keep helping them? I don't know, but I don't think this is a two-man job. Mm. I mean, you get the extra maneuver if you want to stretch your legs. You do you. You know, you know, you're right. I might just go back there. One, two, three. Okay, cool. All right, I'm done. Um, do I want to recover then? Or keep going. Um, because I could go right there. Recover One, and go there next round. You got this. Fine, I'm recovering. Okay. okay, that's the round. All right. Two more turns. Two more full rounds to go. Okay. So going back to them. I'm gonna have a test. That's what we don't know. That's what we don't know. I'm going back to the A one over there, not A one. A, A. I'm going to extra maneuver because I'm not sure what this is going to be, but okay. I'm going to hope I can just pass the test. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to go ahead and extra maneuver as well. Okay. Um, should I? No, you know what? I'm going to do focus. Okay. This might be a mistake, but I can get there in one turn, so then it's a question coming back. Okay. Right. Well, um, you're first. I'm first. I'm going to go spending a stamina to go one, two, immediately flipping A. Can I see A? Okay. Chest carrying clergyman. You see a priest of the fifth eye carrying a heavy chest marked with exquisite signs. The chest Five seems seconds. too heavy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The chest seems too heavy for me with my one intelligence. <laughs> Where's that eight roll when you need it? This is the wrong way to go. This is the wrong way to go. 
The that chest seems <laughs> too heavy for the elderly Nick to command, but he is desperately trying to keep it above water. He refuses help, saying he has vowed before the fifth eye to take care of it alone. Um, I'm going to continue my movement in there and uh, foolishly roll two dice, hoping for no, a half a decent success. Oh, you only? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. Two dice. That's okay. two successes. That is a failure, and that is my turn. All right. I'll try again next turn. My turn. I only have one more turn. Can you get out? Yeah. You can move six. I don't need. I mean, the question is, what do we need to do? I don't know. What I don't you know. Do. I assume you have to get out All or right. something. Well, it's your turn. All right. I honestly forget. All right. That's a good thing. Um. All right. So I'm gonna move one into here mm -hmm. and do G. Okay. Strange contraption. You wade through the knee deep water to reach the strange contraption. The wagon has wings of wood and fabric and a complex mechanism for powering and operating them. Inside is plenty of cargo. So you can spend an extra maneuver to flip this. A whole maneuver action? Yep. Oh my god, I guess. Okay. So go ahead and do so. Sure. Alright, flip. Oh, bam, bam. <laughs> Alright, flip. <laughs> Sack of scrolls. You find flasks, blankets, candles, spare clothes, totems, and other objects. Some common and other strange, but none that looks useful right now. Then you come across a sack containing some valuable looking scrolls. The sack may keep the rain out, but it will not protect them from the flood. Place this card below your hero board. You may give this card to hero in the same area as your other hero on your turn or theirs. If the hero with this card moves onto an area with this, place this card in the salvage pile. So you have to get back there. Which you... You think I should just open the door and be crazy? You can't open the door. That's card M. Same, same M both sides. Oh, M, M. M is... You the can door? go to M. And you can look closer. I can probably maybe break it down or something. You can look closer, yeah. Okay. So we have, how much do we have so left? So I take this? We have one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. I also didn't say it, but I had meant to spend a thing for three movement this turn. Well, I think that would be a waste. Uh, no, no, you should be able to. Yeah, Either yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, do it. Okay, so Eight you have two turn. movement. So go ahead. So do you think I should try to just go through this? So I think this way is unsure. This way is certain, I think. Right. That's only the difference. So one, one two. two, yeah. Because I had to move one to get in. Yeah. So that's where I am. Okay, and then we go to the next round. I'm gonna again take the focus, hoping to be able to achieve that. And this is the last round, people. It's it. You either make your way to the salvage pile or don't. Okay. Are you gonna drown if you stay in there? I don't know what happens. We'll find out. I don't All believe right. so. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take go first for first. I'm gonna once again roll two dice, hoping for a success over here. And I got, whoa, okay, we got one. So now we're getting closer. I still need to get another one of these in order to be able to, which only one is Get a chance. double, get one of the doubles. It won't be enough. Oh. I need five. Nope. <sighs> no successes. Dang. Sadly. I had the, all this stamina for it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rest, because why not? All right. Um, I am going to, do I have to test to do this again? Yes. Though? It is still a test. It's going to be two uh, agility. So go ahead and roll for agility. And that is, assuming you spend one, you're Shit. good to go. So that's me one movement point, and do you just want to spend another movement point for another? I don't think. Up to you. What? You, you want to spend another movement point to get three. Oh, another, another thing. Stamina. I can do that the second maneuver. Okay. So yep. one, two, right? That's uh, how much. No. Or yes, 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 one yes. to go through there, one to yep. get here. Then I don't, oh, even so you don't need two. to. Yeah. So one, two. Cool. You could test to see if you can do that. Sure. Doesn't hurt. Cost us nothing. Well, if we knew that, I should have focused. Oh no, I uh, needed the extra maneuver. Yeah. So we need four. One, two dice. Which you can do! <laughs> Look at that! You can do that! And we get five successes. <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy! I just show up and shrunk! She shows shrunk! And that, that's that the, pretty cool. the seventh card, the end of the scenario, which means we now go to the end over here, where we are going to flip as a page. We just go off our salvage pile, and we flip the kick this off the way, I guess. Okay. Conclusion! The flood waters get so high that retreating to the upper floor of the shimmering squid is the only option left to you. Eventually, even that is flooded, and you are forced to climb onto the roof. You see people trying to swim to safety or using doors and tables as makeshift rafts. You spend your time helping Truly, others. Truly, if I was in that kind of a situation, I think I would flip out. Think about that for real. A flood situation where, like, the water is above houses and people are on their furniture. Can you swim? Yeah, but, like, rushing water is No, not judging, me. just curious. Yeah. Not yeah. well, honestly. I mean, who can? Who doesn't? So actually, give me a mermaid tail, and I can do anything. You see people trying to swim to safety using doors and tables. You spend your time helping others, but the truth is, you are also in need of help. Any story cards still below a player's hero board are removed from play. So had we not gotten to the salvage, we'd lose that. For each story card you added to the salvage pile, read the relevant entries in order below. 
So we have chest of the fifth eye, which we did not get. I'm guessing that is the chest carrying Krojiman. You know, Alex, it looks like we have four things here and I got three of them. Yeah, totally a, a, totally a solo effort, I agree. Uh, story card C, Fungus the Grick. The barmaid Stella is petting her Grick, both clearly bringing comfort to each other. She has precious little on her, but as a token of her gratitude, she gives you a rare herb. Aww. Okay. Gain a Star Lotus token. Story card G, stack, stack of scrolls. Before you ran up the stairs, you delivered the scrolls to the one-eyed Ignacia. She gave you some money in gratitude before swimming off to the stable. Mm. Each hero gains two dollars. Write scroll saved in your party journal. Do we have we a pen? Each get two dollars. Yes. Wow. And do you have a pen on you? I do. I do. Because I need a pen first. Writing scroll saved. I think we actually have a few things we need. We to need do. a party name, but we'll do that soon. I so, should put it down here. Yep. Now I don't know if it's supposed to be pen or pencil, but it says just write, so I'm I'm fine with that. Story card K, the Targle Whisperer. Thinking about the scared Targle you saved makes you feel good. Targles are used as mounts by the local Nithigri, but clearly the mysterious Ignatius has found this one useful as well. Something tells you this was not the last you have seen of that magnificent animal. Oh my god, I really hope. You give story card K to the hero who calmed the Targrel, you get the Targle Whisperer card. This is gonna mm. mean something, I know it. Story card L, family saved. In a nearby overcrowded sailboat, you recognize the Patagon family you helped by clearing the road. The boat sails close enough to the inn's roof for the mother to talk to you. I will sacrifice in front of the totem, she says, and makes the claw symbol again. If only there were room, I would rescue myself. But perhaps the spirits will bring you good fortune. With that, she hands you something over the railing. So we get a little token. Also, I'm offended. Just for the record, just on the same page. We're currently about to drown. We rescued her. And she's like, I will pray for you. <laughs> Bye. That's just what's happening. She's on her own next time we play. Okay, <laughs> that's gonna be this one over here. Okay. Uh, then we have additionally, if you placed any st tokens on story card oh, J, we placed, we placed five. As a Corillian, the as a as a Corillian, the innkeeper is not to worry about the water, but he is very protective of his Nithwi step stepdaughter Stella. Most Corillians are born in the underwater cities of the Thalassocracy of Zebul and believe in working hard in pursuit of their dreams. To see one of them being a parent to a Nithwi child is very unusual. The innkeeper thanks you for helping everyone safe and the bridge standing. For helping keep for keeping everyone safe and the bridge standing. As a sign of his gratitude, he gives you some coins. The creative success flows down on you, he says in the Corillian way. Gain one money for each token on story card J and split them amongst the heroes as you want. So we get five money. Also, the card said success is his own reward. Apparently not. So I helping think that you reward. did way more than me in that aspect, and I got this thing. So do you want to do three and two? I got this thingy. Yeah, do you want to do team three and two? Sure. I, I, listen, I think it was a team I, I got this. This is going to oh, oh, be... That. This is like worth... She's 100. like, I can talk down. This is keep 100 your money. gold. Achievements. Now here's the part where we get to achievements, okay? So the achievements over here are as follows. Explorers group. All story cards have been revealed. Yes, I believe they have all been revealed. So we got explorers. Uh, I believe is there a way to mark it down? We would do over here. We just mark it down. Name, condition, okay. Uh, the toughest task, group, story card K G, sack of schools in the South Pile. Local heroes, group, story card J has four or more tokens. And facing yourself, individual, finish the scenario with two or fewer spent stamina. Oh. So I did get that one. That's an individual challenge. So I have gotten the pacing myself challenge. And Meg, you have each of, we have, we have the group challenges. I think we have all of them. Lovely. Yeah, I think we do. We have all of the group challenges and I have the individual challenge. Epilogue. You see ships, boats, gondolas, rafts, flying rickshaws, and airships escaping from the epicenter of the disaster. The Gate of Amber, which is still pouring out the contents of some otherworldly ocean. But there is no help for you. Not until a wagon with flapping wings approaches the roof of the inn. It has a one-eyed Ignacia with her togrel, uh, togrel aboard. I thought you could use a ride, she yells, and throws you a rope ladder. You let the innkeeper, the barmaid, and the inn's other customers climb in first, and then follow them. The wings are operated with an ancient device, which uses a rare Agura crystal for fuel. The Ignacio lets the others off at a nearby hillside and then continues onwards with you. My name is Shantor Three Birds, and I would have you join me in my journey to Woundale. You have much to discuss as you fly north, away from the flooded city, its bells still sounding, the alarm behind you. And that is the Flooded Inn. That is tutorial one, giving you a general overview of a lot of the uh, ways things operate. Mm -hmm. We'll be back soon with scenario two, the Rune, the road, I was going to say the road to Woundale, the road to Woundale, scenario two, where one of us is a Targrel Whisperer, and mm -hmm. the other is not. And I believe we'll introduce combat? Combat's going to be present in the next scenario. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be present. It's going to be present. Anyways, until next time, I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I'm Professor Bang. Hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one. Bye.